Hello, I'm Robin Leach, star of Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I'm introducing Mr. John Santo, host of the number one radio show on the Strong Island Radio Network on Monday nights at 9 o'clock. No other show even comes close. And he's coming to you live from Studio B, a sterilized Studio B, at the Strong Island Radio Network in beautiful downtown Massapequa. We have John Butera, the wealthiest stock picker on Long Island. But first, here's your host, John Santo. Thank you, Robin Leach. I appreciate that. And that's a fitting introduction, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, for my special guest co-host. Please welcome Mr. Say your name. John Butera. John Butera, episode 49. I've been trying to get him since episode one, but... Very hard man to get, and we're friends for a long time, and I'm very happy I got him tonight. This is huge. This was covered in, in all the papers this morning that John Butera was going to be on the radio tonight. Welcome, John. Well, thank you, good sir. Thank you very much. I uh, am very happy that finally I'm able to be on the uh, program with Mr. John Santa. I am ecstatic. Now, John has houses all over Long Island, so it's very difficult to get him in the studio. He has houses all over the world. Uh, because he's the greatest stock picker in, in that I know. And I've made, so I work on a lot of comedy shows with John, and I take all the money that he pays me for those shows, and I invest it into the stocks he tells me to buy. I have made a pre-tax profit of $1.2 million this year alone. <laughs> or is it million lira? A 1.2 million lira, which is about $600. I always get the numbers confused. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I have been lucky, but um, it's, you know, that's what the stock market is. It's pure luck. I, uh, I bought earlier today 45 shares of Tesla, and after hours, uh, Tesla got added to the S&P 500. Oh, finally. And it went up like fifty dollars a share, um, so the twenty five hundred dollars I made after hours is peanuts compared to what Elon Musk made. How much did you said? How many? How much did he make after hours? You told me before the show. So between the hours of four p.m. and eight p.m. in a four hour time slot, I would love to break down the amount of money per second per minute. Mm -hmm. But Elon Musk made fifteen billion dollars with a B. With a B. Nine zeros. Fifteen billion dollars in four hours. Fifteen billion dollars. It sounds better as Robin Leach, the uh, billion dollars. <laughs> um, so it sounds let's... better as the homeless person collecting garbage in a dumpster. It doesn't matter. It's still fifteen billion. Dollars. So that's fifteen billion in a four-hour period. So that's it, seven and a half, it's like three. It, in actuality, John, it was more like in 17 minutes. 17 minutes after hours. Now, I. Because when you reach the top, it sort of stayed status quo, but it was like immediate. Now, I am a more of a boring investor, although I do take risks with some of the uh, some of my my uh, retirement funds. But I'm in the S&P 500 heavily. I'm an index fund investor primarily. That's my core. Holding, but I do, you know, I play with all the stocks that you and I have talked about, and I always some some I buy too late after you tell me, and then you're like, did you buy that stock? And I'm like, don't even tell me what it went to, and, you, and then you of course tell me, and then I get really pissed. Well, like Neo, <laughs> I know that you purchased Neo when I first told you, yep. correct? And Beyond Meat, and I played with a few others. Yep. So I had Neo at three dollars and forty four cents initially. And first, and Neo's at? at like 45. Okay. Now uh, I looked at, see, this is where like a little bit of the trickery comes in, like in terms of like what people read in the papers and what really like, if you look at it as it's happening, right? So Moderna, which has the vaccine, right? That closed just under a hundred dollars today. It hit a hundred, right? A year ago, that stock was at $18, right? So if you bought it at 18 and stayed in it, you made a lot of money. Did I stay in it? No, because I'm a schmuck. Because when I saw it go way up, I got I took some of my money out, and then when it started to go way down, it swung by a good thirty, forty dollars. 
over short periods right. of time. Novavax did the same thing. I bought Novavax at fourteen dollars. I sold it at around twenty-two, which, all in all, that's like almost fifty percent profit, or I guess right. it is a little over fifty percent profit in like a month and a half, and it started to go down. My biggest challenge was I never looked back at Novavax. Right. The next time I looked, it was at $114. It went up $100 from when I purchased it first. Right, right, and right. I had 100 shares. I had 100 shares. And if I would have had the 100 shares at a $100 gain, that's a lot of money. Right. Now, if I would have known that Moderna was going to go from 20 to 100 I would have sold everything, right. put all my money in Moderna. But it went right, of course. Right, of course. That's why we have to build that time machine. That's the best thing that we can do to make money in the stock market is to go back to last you know, year and buy a shitload Mar of Moderna at eighteen bucks. Marty McFly had the right idea with that magazine. Yep. When he went back in time, I mean, when he went to the future to bring the magazine back with him. Yep. Yep. Now this is funny though, because you know how like the magazine worked, right? Obviously, in Back to the Future two. When he went into the future and he and he found out that that's what Biff got when he went back in time from the father, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But this is the funny thing. 1950 to 2000 sports results so you can go back and bet on games and make money. Yeah. Sound, sounds great. But did you ever watch the movie Hot Tub Time Machine? No. All right. Hot Tub Time Machine was a movie that starred um, John Cusack, Rob Chowdhury, uh, a couple other guys. And uh, um, uh, what's the... I forgot the guy's name. Greg Anderson. Greg... Um, I forget. It. He's going to be the new host of Masked Dancer. I forgot his name. Okay. But anyway, so these guys went back in time to when they were uh, in college. And then they go back in... So they go back in time. But they are themselves 20 years earlier, but are still in their own bodies. It's a little weird, whatever. It's a weird movie. All right, all right. Uh, Chevy Chase is like the whimsical person in the movie. And uh, they go back in time, and the one guy goes, I will bet you that I get to have sex with your wife if the Denver Broncos win. <laughs> now, in, in the movie, uh, I mean, in, the, in, in, in history – the Broncos win the game by like a last second touchdown right. or a last second field goal. And in the, the, when they go into the, you know, when they go back in time, they're trailing Elway throws a bomb. The guy has like three seconds left, goes to kick the field goal. But because obviously things can change yep. with events changing, uh, a squirrel runs across the field, gets in the kicker's way. <laughs> and the guy misses the field goal. And now he has to blow his friend instead. <laughs> well, you, it could be a small thing. Let's say we went back in time, right? We knew the results of the game, right? But we went back in time. And let's say I'm in the stands and my watch reflects off the sun and gets in the kicker's eyes and he misses the field goal. Right. right. We were in the th so we changed it. Just by well, one second, or we didn't bump into a guy that went to the stands and his watch caused the reflection. Like, right. There's all these little micro things that could happen, you know? What if when we were driving to the game, we get into a car accident and it is the kicker? You know, we hit the kicker. In the, you know, for, or, or if you're a Mets relief pitcher, Duana Sanchez, and you get to a taxi cab accident. Right. <laughs> yep. All was, kinds it, of was that accident between the double header? Where the first game was at Shea and the second game was at Yankee Stadium. When was that? You remember Duana Sanchez got hurt in a taxi cab accident? How long ago was this? It was years ago, but I don't remember if he was going from the game to the Yankee game. No, it could have been. It would have been on a team bus. Never mind. Right, right. But Duana Sanchez, the, the pitcher for the Mets, got into a car accident, into a taxi accident. And, uh, and he missed some time. There was a player that you know, when they get called up, remember when the Mets had Ve Las Vegas as the AAA place? They, right. They had the, the 51s. Uh, they would call up a guy who had to get on, like, the red eye or or sometimes right. in the morning, and he would, he would like, miss the couple, first couple innings of the game, you know, just because he had to fly right. all the way in from Vegas. 
thankfully now they're in Syracuse, Binghamton, and Brooklyn. So if people get called up, they could either drive or it's a short flight. It's no time zone difference. And climactically, right. they, they switch Brooklyn to the. Uh, I think it's going to be double A, right? I think it's triple A now, Brooklyn, which makes the most sense. Brook, no, I think Syracuse is Triple A unless they reversed it. Do they reverse Syracuse? With it does make sense know. to have the Triple A close, yeah. Right, because Syracuse is still a two-hour plane ride. That's a two-hour flight, yeah. So if they, if they, if well, I heard that well, the, if it's Triple A, it's going to be a full season, which is great because now you can go to a Cyclones game. Right. I've never been. Have you ever been there to a Cyclones game? No, I have not. Unfortunately, me neither. But it's. I heard it's like ten dollars a ticket. It's cheap. Well, that's what the, the Ducks is like, 12. So yeah, it's like that. Of- it's like that kind of thing. But they give you, like, all kinds of goodies. Like, they give you, like, uh, there's, like, packages you can buy that includes hot, you know, all kinds of, you know, go- goodies, like merchandise and food and stuff. It's like a really nice uh, little event. They're a lot cheaper than a major league game. So, really quick, while we, we, we before we get away from the stocks, I have one last stock to ask you about. Go ahead. Saturday night when we were not doing a comedy show. Right. <laughs> um, I spoke to you about WPG, Washington yep. Prime, uh, Prime Group. Yep. I think I'm up about 7% with that stock. Nice. Now, in the next couple of days, probably well, a week or so, the dividend hits for it. Right, right. And then you get the money in December. I am up to 20,000 shares. Because I put uh, a large portion in earlier today, and then it went up four cents a share. So I did real well today with WPG. It's at like 74 cents, a little bit more than 74 cents yep. uh, a stock, a share. Now, there there have been a few. St- no, go ahead. Sorry, with the delay, I, I thought you that? were done. I'm sorry. With the delay, I thought you were done. We have a little delay. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. So with with that, the 20,000 shares I have, uh, six months ago on their last dividend call, they paid out 12 and a half cents per share. If I get 12 and a half cents per share times 20,000 shares, right. that's $2,500. And that's also three times what you made on the share price change today of four cents. <laughs> True. So you get another 12 cents right there. Right. So all in all, I'll I'll have made basically now this mind you, this is a stock I was down over a thousand dollars on for the last five months. Because mm-hmm. I bought it originally at a dollar twelve and now it's in the seventy range. Right, right. But I kept buying a thousand shares at a time as it was dropping down, and I ultimately got my Average cost is sixty eight cents, and now it's at seventy four cents. So I'm up six cents a share, which isn't a huge amount, but times twenty thousand total shares, it is. Yep. Now I remember that stock I told you about, Cedril. Yes, you bought ten thousand shares, correct? I bought. Uh, no, I think I bought uh, uh, two thousand. It was like a, under a dollar a, a share. Right. right? It was. Uh, then it went to. Uh, went all the way up to. Did it go to four? It used to trade for five thousand a share. Right. All right, and then it like collapsed, and then I'm like, well, they, you know, it's headquartered in Bermuda, um, but it's run out of London's financial district, and they 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 build um, oil drilling equipment, sea drill, so, uh, for for underwater oil explorer oil exploration, right? So. I'm like, if this, if I buy two thousand shares and it goes back up to five thousand a share, I've got like millions of dollars, right? So, <laughs> uh, but it never went there. So I, I did make some money with it, like I, I it quadrupled, and I, right. you know, but then I then I got out of it because I was like, wow, that's a big gain, and I didn't want to test the uh, test the waters, no pun intended. So then it right, went down right. to like fifty cents, and I'm like, okay, so I sold the remaining shares um, on the way down, still. Took a little bit of a loss on the remaining, but I made, you know, I made it up on the beginning. Um, right. And then it got delisted. Now it's over the counter. And I don't even know what it's at. It's like a penny stock now. 
Um, you know what's weird? But, um, but there's, a, there's a stock. There's a stock that I was looking into. It was S H L L. It was Tortoise uh, something holdings. What is it? S H L L. S H L L. But it's no longer traded on the stock market. It's OTC, like that over the counter coupon, whatever they call it. I, I I don't know. I guess so. It was it was intertwined a lot with SPAC and with um, MRAM. But now it's no longer on the market. Like you can't buy it. It's not. It's not anywhere. Well, did they get bought and by? Another, from, did, did they get bought by? I don't somebody? know. About, it, it may have, but there's no way for me to find out. I have no idea. Yeah. So it went from like twenty dollars a share to forty four dollars a share in like a month. Wait. So that and then well, it repeat, disappeared. Repeat the share difference. What was it? It went from twenty to forty four in like a month, mm -hmm. and then it dropped back down to like twenty eight. Right. Which is still a good margin. It's you know eight dollars on twenty, but I can't find it anymore. Now, now I also feel like to be, you know, journalistically honest, I should also tell you what a loser I can be in the stock market, right? So those are examples <laughs> of. What, so I had Sprint for a long time, and I bought it. You know, it was a, a single digit, three four dollars stock price, and I had it for a while. When it went up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit, whatever. And I sell, I'm like, oh, this T-Mobile thing isn't going to happen. So idiot that I am, I sell it like two months before it gets the T. But then it goes up by like, you know, 25% on the T-Mobile news, you know. So, right. I, I, you know, I've also sold other stocks that all of a sudden get bought out. And I, you know, I didn't, you know, I kind of like did nothing. I didn't make any money with it. And then all of a, as soon as I sell it, it takes off. So people, if you want to make money in the stock market, I'll tell you what stocks I've sold, and you buy those tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are two other stocks that I did really well with in like a one, two day purchase. Mm -hmm. One was Hertz. I bought it at a dollar three and ah, sold yes. it. Ah, yes, yep. And I sold it at three oh three. Now, what's Hertz trading? Do we know where it's at now? I don't. It's probably around two bucks, is my guess. Yeah, because those. Those I was playing around with the crew during the pandemic, right? I was playing with the airlines, the cruise lines, and the car rental companies, thinking that because right. we didn't know how long it was going to be, and they they took big hits. So what I did with that analysis, John, I looked at stocks that were, if they were crappy before the pandemic, I kind of looked at them differently than stocks that were doing well, and then the pandemic created them, right? So if the pandemic right. brought, made them go down, I I said, okay, those are probably good buys. Right, but the ones that were crap before it, and the pandemic just exasperated the crap. That those I tended not to buy. So right. I played around with Norwegian cruises, Royal Caribbean. Um, well, Royal Caribbean went up a lot today. They went up a lot, right? Because every time bought, the vaccine I was and it, sold yeah. today, Royal Caribbean. Right. You bought. You what? You bought and sold it one day. Yeah. Yeah. So can I, what do you so? Other than like that, what I looked at with the with the pandemic, right? When I started to see that stocks were getting really cheap, um, and a lot of those stocks I was looking at anyway, I had like um, research limits that when they fell below a certain price, that I would get an alert. And then when the pandemic hit, they all like I was looking at them anyway, but the pandemic just made them pop onto my radar because the price went below what I set. How do you look at stocks? How do like what kind of um, philosophy do you have when you look at what stocks you're going to buy i look at uh their trend either one month or three months right and then when i see on the day that they lost a lot say they were they started like a say we'll use a generic stock like a ford which is around eight dollars a share right right if ford starts the day at eight o'clock or I should say closes the day at eight o'clock at eight dollars right. right at 4 p.m closes at eight pre-market goes to 820 say okay then as the market opens it drops to 750 it plummets right All right now it starts to go back up at 752 753 that's when I buy okay so you're locking you do a lot of pre-market right before the open 
Well, no, no, no. As, as the market's open, say it's like 940 and it goes down like 60 cents. Right. 70 cents. As it starts its way back up and it starts creeping back, 753, 754, 755, and now when I see that it's trending back up, I'll buy. Gotcha. Okay. Now, if it's a stock I want to hold on to, I'll hold on to it. If it's a stock like Ford, doesn't really move a lot. GE doesn't move a lot. Right. Those are the old industrial um, st stalwart stocks that just kind of, yeah. Right. They, they move between a dollar or two dollars over like a two month span. Right. So if you could buy it low, and even if it's, it goes up like 17 cents, but I'll buy a thousand shares. If it goes up 17 cents, I made it 170 bucks. Right. Whatever it is. I'll take my money out and I'll sell it at the end of the day. Right, 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 right. There's one stock that has a continuous trend. It's rocket companies, you know, like rocket mortgage. Yep. Every day it starts off by plummeting, right? Then it goes up, right? Then it goes down and it plummets at the end of every day. Really? So now, what happens is, as it plummets at the end of every day, say you buy it at three fifty five right before the market closes, it'll close at like twenty dollars, twenty ten, twenty fifteen. Right, right. When it opens the market the next day, it'll be at like twenty one dollars. Now, if you could sell it as the market closes, I mean, as the market opens, mm -hmm. you'll make a dollar a share. But then it's going to plummet right away. Right, right. So if you wait too long, you're going to lose everything. So I think I'm going to do the rest of the stocks in my Mike Francesa voice because I think it's more interesting. I really do. <laughs> so we have John Butera, who is a top draft pick for stock picking. Nobody picks stocks better than John Butera. Nobody. John, are there any stocks that you look at that you hold? Are there any ones that you hold longer term? Neo. And he holds Neo. Um, I bought Neo at 344 initially. I bought more at 14, I bought more at 20, and now it's above 40. I I keep 500 shares, right? So I have like 25,000 in NEO, generally. But what I do is I'll buy 50 shares or 100 shares as it goes down. Then as it goes up and it reaches where I think it's plateauing for the right. moment, I sell it. So my overall gain is like $10,000, $12,000 in NEO. But today I bought 100 shares when it went down to like 41 and change and then sold it when it went to 43. Right, right. So I made another $200 today alone on a quick sale. Yeah. Now we should say that our opinions about stocks are our own and you should always seek the advice of a professional even though it's really a crapshoot, and we we just John is just very good at picking stocks, so listen to him. <laughs> even though we don't, even though we can't tell you to listen to him. If right, if, I am not Craig Carton. Don't see me, meet me, give me ten thousand dollars and turn to fifteen. You know, if you if you were the manager of the of, well, let me just see if you did have an investment house. This is can I take a crack at the commercial that we would ha do sure. for you? We're going to totally rip off E.F. Hutton, okay? But we're going to be honest about it. When John Butera speaks, people listen. The John Butera Fund has outperformed the S&P 500 for the last nine quarters. The Butera Fund. Buy it. That would be pretty good, right? That's a good commercial. So let me tell you real quick. Now, I am not a stock guru. I only started doing stocks January 2nd. Of this year? Of this year. It's right. been less than a year. Wait a second. Less than a year. When we were in Florida in February, you were rattling off these things. I, I was buying them like while we're talking by the pool. I was buying yeah. the stocks. And, and I was only in the market for about a month. You didn't tell me that. Jeez, I, I made money by accident. I made $11,000 no. off of what you told me. <laughs> Now, John, I went to St. Anthony's High School and St. John's University. I'm intelligent. <laughs> Lane, I've been going to this high school for six and a half years. I'm no dummy. Do you know what that's from? Is that, That's not Breakfast Club. That's uh, 
Is that fast times? Nope. Couple. I'll give you a hint. Couple of years after fast times. Lane, I've been going to this high school for six and a half years. I'm candles? no dummy. Sixteen candles. Year before that, no, very close. So you're on the right. You're in that genre of movie. movie. I'll give you one more hint. You ready? Yeah. Lane Maya. Will he win a race? We don't know. Two brothers. One speaks K2. no English. The other learned watching Wild World of Sports. So it was K2. He needs his $2. $2! <laughs> and I can't... Is it just say anything. What's the name of the movie? You're so close! You're what the hell is the name of the movie? Better Off Dead. Better off dead. Yeah, John Cusack, right. Lane, I know it's real awkward, me being a cartoon character, but uh, would you mind if I took Beth out? <laughs> my, my favorite scene of the movie is when the mother invites them over for dinner, and she's like, I know that you're from France, so I have French fries, <laughs> French dressing with French bread. <laughs> let, let me tell you, that you know, I thought of that scene... I was in Italy, right, in 2001. So that's uh, 16 years after the picture came out. Right? I'm in Italy. Right. And this is why this woman that was on the tour with us is the reason why you should have to take a test before you're allowed to leave this country, be issued a passport, and represent us to people around the world. Right? The, so a lot of the waiters in Italy speak English, but a lot of them don't, right? So instead of saying it in Italian what she wanted, she was like, she, she felt if she said it slowly and loudly, he would understand. She was like, Diet Coke, just like the woman. <laughs> in, so I said to her, Viatato fumare. And she goes, what does that mean? I said, no smoking, but it doesn't matter how loud I say it. I saw the no smoking sign. It said via tatu famare. So that's what I used to tell her. But this is like, great. Like you've traveled around the world. Don't, don't, there's a lot of Americans that are downright embarrassing because they don't know basic diplomacy. So I'm going to tell you something that I have done myself and it's completely moronic. Like, Beyond moronic, like as stupid as stupid could possibly be. Okay. But I'm going to admit this to you on your radio show because why not? Why not? I have spoken to a, an Asian man. Say he's Chinese, right? Okay. Okay. And I'm speaking to him in English and he doesn't understand me. I go to speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> like, just to like prove you're multilingual? Is that my English? Just to prove you're multilingual? So that I speak Spanish and then I try Italian. Like the Chinese man. Better chance of not speaking English. All of a sudden he's going to know Spanish right. or Italian. Right. Well, I was with and my... And I know it's moronic, but I, I like don't know what to do when I can't... Because I don't speak Chinese. Well, I was in uh, Europe and I was, uh, when I was, it was with colleagues in Europe that there were about uh, four or five of them. And they, one was from Germany, one was from the UK, one was from Italy, one was from Switzerland, and the other one was from France. And they're all talking to each other. I'm sitting like right in front of them on the bus. We're going to a trade show. And they're behind me. And I heard them. I, now, I didn't know what they were saying, but I knew they had switched from German to French to uh, something else. Maybe it was Spanish. And I'm like, now, I totally get that you guys are all multilingual, like multi-multilingual. They speak like five languages, right? But I'm like, how do you make like the decision the to go from you, – you were starting in German, then you went to French, and then you went to – you know, how do you make – how does that happen? Like, I was just curious to see how that happened. Like, how do you pick – like Right, you know, that's crazy. That was crazy. So I said to them, I go, I studied really hard before I came to this trip in London. I learned how to speak English English. Right, because of Austin Powers, it's like hello. It's all, and I had all the the English <laughs> words down. Like, excuse me, I have to go to the flat. You know, like I knew all that because they have different words for a lot of things. So I figured if a oh yeah, I mean, I I was in I was in England for months in two thousand three. Um, I was planning on living in England. I like bought a one way ticket. Really, and. Um, obviously I ended up coming back to the United States, but, um, 
I have family there, and yeah, like instead of potato chips, they're called crisps. Crisps, and pop. Pop is a and soda. Pop and uh, and and their sandwiches are called. Um, uh, what the hell are the sandwiches called? Um, it's like a weird word that we don't even like. Like we have grinder, sub, hoagie. They have something else that I didn't know. It was like like melt. Or oh yes, weird. it's called. It's uh, um um. They they their sandwiches aren't like ours either. When I went to the to the air show over there, I was at the in Farnbro. My boss comes back. He goes, "What the hell? Why did you buy four sandwiches?" I said, "Ken, their idea of a sandwich is a freaking two slices of thin bread, one slice of turkey, one slice of cheese, and a freaking uh, uh, pickle on it. That's it. That's yeah. It. They put cucumbers. They put cucumbers Cuc- on their cucumbers. Cucumbers. I'm like, what the hell? I I, I ate one of them. I felt like I didn't have anything. I had to eat four of them to even begin to feel full. And they cut the crust off the bread. Yeah, and they cut the cr- right. The cr- it was like a little. And they it- diagonally cut it, so you're getting like a wedge. Right. I remember when I was there the first time in England when I was ten years old. And there's something about my first trip to England I'll never ever forget. It was August of 1990. Sorry, 1988. Oh, I thought you were going to say 98. Right? I was there in August of 98. That would have been free. August of, yeah, right. August 1988. And something happened on my trip. I was there from August 3rd to August 10th. Okay. My father's birthday is August 8th. Something happened while I was there that changed the landscape of Canadian American sports history. See if you can think of what it was. August of 88. Canadian right. British sports history? No, Canadian US sports history. August of 88. Was it an the Olympic? Most dominating, was... The most dominating athlete of our lifetimes in team sports was traded. I don't know. Wayne Gretzky. Oh, I don't know hockey. Wayne Gretzky was traded from Edmonton to Los Angeles in August of 88, and I was in England when it happened. Oh, wow. I thought it was an Olympic And thing. I remember my cousins were like, my cousins were like, why is that such a big deal? I'm like, you don't know who Wayne Gretzky is. I'm like, you don't even know who fucking anybody is. <laughs> now, wait a second. You would have been how old? Like 10? I was 10 in 88. 10 yeah. in 88. Wow. Very interesting. It's okay. How many times have you been over there? I've been to England three times. Three I've been times. to Italy three times. I've uh, I've sailed uh, the Mediterranean. Um, the I have not yet been to Africa, but I do hope to go soon. I would love to go to Africa. I want to go to Egypt. I wouldn't mind going to Somalia. Somalia, um, you know, because well, Italy still owns part of it. Well, what you don't want to? Well, you I want to. You got to be careful. I want to go to Italian Somaliland. <laughs> I went Italian Somaliland. I used to have an aunt that lived it's in great. Egypt. They, I almost they, got to in go a, to, in Italian Somaliland. They make tree bark spaghetti. It's fantastic. I almost went to Egypt in eighty uh, five, eighty six. My father's cousin, I used to call her my aunt, but my father's cousin lived there. And she was married to an Egyptian national who was a vice president of American Express. So he was going to get me, you know, over there, you know, real on the cheap because he had a lot of travel connections. And um, but right. my mother wouldn't let me go because all those terror incidents happened. And uh, there were the two hijackings. Right. Uh, they they brought, brought the people to Beirut. That's when the movie Delta Force was made. Uh, where they, right. where they rescued and, um, I would also like to go to Libya, but things have to change there before I go there. Let me see if I can find. Now that was a good movie, Delta Force, with uh, that was with uh, Chuck Norris and um, Lee Marvin. Yes. Good. Then picture. there was Delta Force with Larry the Cable Guy. Right. The Del- Delta Force movie was real. That was like a real '80s tough guy movie because that was Chuck right. Norris. Like blood sport. And it had a great theme. It had this one. 
You knew the yep. shit was hitting the fan of Chuck Norris on a motorcycle with rockets. <laughs> and it's like, and then he made like the flight. They're like, where's the major? It's like, he should have made it, you know? So I could have made, I wanted to make a Delta Force 2, right? I could have written this movie in my sleep, right? The movie stars Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. They're both special forces colonels, right? I got the whole scene, right? It's like, all right, we're going to go in and rescue the hostages. We're going to blow the roof. What are you going to do? I'm going to walk right through the front door and make sure you're at the rendezvous point or I leave your ass in the desert. Like, I could have written that movie. It would have had all the tough guy lines. I mean, why didn't they make that movie? That would have been a great me, movie. Now, you and I both love movies. Yep. So if you don't mind me switching over from Go our ahead. brief sports British stint. Yep. But um, what do you consider? All right. First question. Do you consider Die Hard a Christmas movie? I consider. Well, I don't think it was released at Christmas time. Right. I believe it was a summer blockbuster picture. Am I right? I believe it was released in August, September, and it ran through the Christmas time. Through the Christmas holiday. I it, it I, I don't consider it a Christmas movie because it's not about Christmas, even though it's a Christmas time. But it is right. it, it is it has become a bit of it to some people. Which I think is very weird because I don't consider it a Christmas movie. No, it's an action movie. Yeah. But like because I don't know if you saw this meme that's been going around on Facebook. It it's, lists like 12 Christmas movies and says, pick your three favorite. If you could watch only three, which would it be? And Die Hard is on there, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, like, number one is uh, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Number two is Polar Express. Yeah. Three is Elf. And it goes through the list. They left off Bad Santa. Oh, how could you leave off Bad Santa? Um, my, my top three, if I could only watch three Christmas movies would be Christmas Vacation. Absolutely. A Christmas Story. Yep. And Home Alone. Good choices. Now, other ones that are possible for me are Elf. Right. Grinch with Jim Carrey. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, what's the other one? Um, um, oh, there's one other one I really like. Oh, the Charlie Brown Christmas. Oh, of course, yeah. Those are all classics. Right. So the three. Someone picked Jingle All the Way, and that's a, that's a horrible movie. Nah, but, that's not. Yeah, no. I agree. That's you know, not Sin, a, Sinbad yeah. can't be in your favorite movie. <laughs> now, now I was offered a uh, corporate gig in eight, in uh, two years ago, to 2018, uh, about the week before Christmas, right? So close enough to Christmas time. At uh, it was at the City Corp building in Manhattan. It was my fr my friend works there, and she wanted to hire me for a corporate gig there. I'm like, wait a second, you want me to go to a high rise financial building the week before Christmas on the 30th anniversary of Die Hard? And I'm a, I'm a guest? Are you out of your mind? I'm not doing it. And my name is John? F you. I'm not doing that gig. You got to be kidding. I don't know how to fire. I'm not walking on. First of all, I would have never taken my shoes off. That's number one. If I had done the gig. Right. right? Never taken my shoes off. But, I mean, that was like hardcore shit. I, I drove, when I was in L.A., I had to drive to Nakatomi Plaza. Even though it's not Nakatomi Plaza, I had to drive by it. I didn't give right. a shit how far out of the way it was. I drove by. I drove by that, and I drove by the Brady well, Bunch house. I don't know if you remember this or not, but um, a, pretty much exactly a year ago, actually it was a year and a week ago, I was in Hawaii. Yes, I saw the pictures of you flying the plane. Yes. So when I was in Hawaii... The only thing I wanted to see was the governor's palace. Ayalani Palace. And I love Hawaii Five-0. Me, with the original or the new one? The new one. Okay, I'm a big fan of Jack Lord, the original Five-0. Okay. Right? So Alex McLaughlin, Scott Kahn, yep. um, the whole cast. I love. It's actually one of my top five favorite. TV shows of all time. Really? Then I got to watch it. I have CBS. I can watch them all. 
I have CBS for my Star Trek, and uh, I got to watch. I'll tell you this. If you watch it from, see, from episode one to the last episode, yep. you will not be disappointed. I will tell you this. The last series finale episode of Hawaii Five-0 was so good. I still have it on my DVR and watch the last 10 minutes once a month. Really? Now it, answer it, me one question without, without, without giving it away. Answer me one question about that Hawaii Five-0. Yes. Is, is there a woe fat in it? Yes. Okay. Because that was his arch nemesis. See, I, got the, I, got, I always like to have the music. So, low fat, not giving anything away. Well, he, I know he's Chinese um, intelligence from the original show. I know, I know, you know, who, you know, about him, you know. Do you remember the original Master Chef? No, Iron Chef? The TV show Iron Chef? No, I never watched the cooking shows. Okay, so, there's a... There's a gentleman on the on the shows. Now I'm not sure what nationality he is. I don't know if he's Asian or Philip. Well, Filipino would be Asian, but or if he's Hispanic. But mm -hmm. um, he was in a movie called Only the Strong. He was uh, um, a, uh, a martial arts teacher in the movie called Only the Strong. He plays Wolf Fat. Okay, that's the Wolf Fat guy. Um, okay, right. Terry O'Quinn is in um, Hawaii Five-0. Daniel Day Kim plays Chin. Yep. Now, uh, Kono Grace is Grace Park, Park from Battlestar Galactica. Grace Park plays yes. Kono, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Dano is Scott Kahn, and Alex McLaughlin plays um, McGarrett. McGarrett. Yep. And I got to be honest, it, it's a phenomenal show. Um, my favorite... Five TV shows. Oh, well, getting back to Hawaii. Yep. The only thing I wanted to do was to see the Governor's Palace. Um, come on, I want to lay a palace, whatever it's called. And King and, Kamehameha. Uh, yes. So I was only on the island of Honolulu or, you know, Oahu, whatever, for like 10 minutes and 10 minutes. Like the plane landed, I had to get on the cruise ship. Right, right. The cruise ship land, it was there and I had to get right to the airport. I never got to see it, but because um, I love the gold statue yep, yep. of uh, of the king of the king, yeah. Yep. Now the one that's in front of the the one that's in front of the governor's palace is not the real statue. That's a fake statue that was duplicated. It's much bigger, right, than the original. But when I was on the island of, I want to say Maui. That's the original statue is on the on the island of Maui. And yeah. I actually took a picture in front of the original statue, which was pretty cool. That's wild. Um, I don't know if you've been to Hawaii. I wish. It was phenomenal. I'm, like, I'm going back whenever we're able to. Well, as soon as we buy the right stocks, then I could go to Hawaii. <laughs> uh, so really quick, one thing about the stocks um, – from April 4th to today, right? I'm yep. up 49%. And the S&P 500 is not. <laughs> John Butera has beat the S&P 500. But I do want to say one thing. Have you seen that commercial on TV with the that, um, I forget his name, the Asian guy uh, wrote the, uh, the, the Rich Dad, Poor Dad book? Kawasaki. Uh, Robert Kawasaki. Kawasaki. Kawas What's his name? Robert Kawasaki. Kawasaki. I said Kawasaki. Kawasaki. He's on TV saying uh, silver and gold are going to go way up. And uh, if these guys really believe that, how much are they spending on that commercial? Put it in the gold and silver. Why are you telling me? <laughs> you should be sh putting all your money instead of running this stupid commercial a hundred times well, a day. Buy the do you know how many copies of his book. You know how many copies of Rich Dad Poor Dad he sold? Oh, millions, <laughs> millions. Right, but buy this. If so you're so convinced that gold silver's going to go up, why aren't you buying it instead of running the stupid commercial? <laughs> now, as far as TV shows, yeah, and then I guess we can get to movies, whatever. As far as TV shows, my all-time five 
favorite series okay are so much above any other series that I've watched I could rattle them off easy okay right and they're all pretty current to be honest with you in no particular order Hawaii 50 all right 24 oh yeah 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 um King of Queens uh-huh Blind Spot. Have you ever seen Blind Spot? No. Uh -uh. Blind Spot is an NBC show. It just finished this last year. Okay. The show opens with a duffel bag in Times Square. And the bomb unit goes to the duffel bag, unzippers the bag to see if there's a bomb. And there's a human. It's a woman, and she's covered in tattoos. Oh, I did see the the preview for that. Yeah. So that show goes full circle 360 and is another series finale that I have on my DVR and I watch it repetitively. How many did you want to do? I got only have four shows that I wrote down so far. Right. And a recent show only lasted three seasons. Designated Survivor. Oh yeah, good show, good, good picture. Yep. But the uh, I, I like that movie too, and they both have you have two Kiefer Sutherland programs in there. Yes, which is odd. Which but is yes. odd. So my favorite shows, and I wish they would bring it back. They brought it back as a movie. The movie was good. Miami Vice got to come back. Um, right. I like that. In fact, you and I could play the detectives. I think we'd be awesome. <laughs> We have we have the cotton shirt thing now. When I travel somewhere, I, I also liked Homeland a lot. Uh, Five O, the original, but I'll, I'm going to look at the the new one and Twenty Four uh, as well right. as on my list. I love Twenty Four, but um, when I go someplace that has a movie or a, or a TV theme, like when I went to Miami for the first time, soon as I saw the Miami skyline on Route ninety on uh, I ninety five, in went the soundtrack. <laughs> I bring the soundtrack, right? So Miami Vice went right in the soundtrack. If I would have known you were Miami Vice, I would have driven down to Miami with spring training. We could have bought the cotton blazes and driven around the beach. You know? um, so Miami Vice. While we were in Florida. And when, and when I was while in. While we were in Florida. What? What was that? Go ahead. No, when I was in uh, San Diego, Top Gun, had the whole Top Gun soundtrack. I even went to Viper's house when he walked with him on the beach. That's in uh, Point Luma. <laughs> I even went to Viper's house. Uh, if I ever go to Hawaii, I'll have the Hawaii Five O theme on the whole time I'm there, All right? The whole time. Right. Um, when I went to, did you ever see a movie called Foul Play? Goldie Hawn, Chevy Chase, nineteen seventies picture. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The opening scene of that picture, she, uh, Goldie Hawn is in her Volkswagen Beetle driving down the Pacific Coast Highway, and they're right. playing Barry Manilow, ready to take a chance again, right? I met my wife out in San Francisco. She was out there on business. I met her in San Francisco. We drove down the coast to L.A. I played ready to take a chance again as soon as I got on the Pacific Coast Highway. Nice. Just like in the movie. So I try to replicate. We went to the Brady Bunch house and went to soundtrack. I mean, I had it, I had it all planned, you know. I liked did, the you ever, uh, did you ever eat at... The uh, when Harry met Sally, table of cat deli. I have. I I I didn't eat in there. I took it to go. Oh, uh, I took it to go. Um, so there's a TV show that was on A and E or AMC, uh, A and E, called Turn. Did you watch it? No. Okay. So Turn is about the Washington spy ring during the American Revolution. In episode four or five, well, let me let me give you a little background. I live in Setauket. This right? has historical significance, right, to the revolution? Yes. Yep. Yes. So I live in the part of Setauket named Strong's Neck, which got its name from Anne Strong. Anne Strong was a woman who... Um, her property was between two bodies of water, the neck of Strong's neck, 
and boats came in one direction and boats could leave the opposite direction, but they couldn't cross, obviously, because of a, a, a land bridge, right? She would hang her laundry upside down if the Redcoats were coming so the Americans could leave the opposite direction. Right, right, right. Interesting. And Abraham Woodhull, who was one of the biggest turncoats in American history, his house still stands less than a quarter of a mile away from my house. Wow. Now, in episode four or five, a red coat from Britain, you know, a British red coat, has his knife-drawn musket in the chest of an American uh, of an American soldier, right, with his foot on his chest and the and the blade of his musket in his chest, and he goes, "Where are you from? Where do you live?" He goes, "I'm from Setauket," and it was like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Because he said he's from my town. Right, right. And it was freaking awesome. And uh, it's a great, it's like a four, a four season show. It's very good. It's it's a little abstract, not 100% historically right. factual. What what channel is it on? What, what is it on? It was on, I believe it was on A&E. A&E. It's over. It finished like a year ago. And he's from Setauket. That's funny. I mean, if you watch the show, it's great. It's I, a little fictitious, but I guess I had to make it that way. Yeah, I like, like I like historical shows. So, I mean, this is great because it's about our history. Yeah, now, yeah. if you were ever to come out where I live, I could take you around historically, and you'd be like, holy shit. There's Rose Tavern um, where George Washington used to drink beer. Right, right. There's... Caleb Brewster's house um, that had a grist mill in it is still yeah. there. Do you, did you ever go downtown to where George, the cobblestone area down by uh, Wall Street with the um, the tavern is where George Washington drank or whatever? And uh, um, the one that's in the movie Scent of a Woman? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I forget. So I was down there. Uh, I worked down there for uh, briefly. I was... Uh, um, and I was down there, and I'm, I walk over to it on my lunch hour, and I'm like, it's amazing that this building has been here for hundreds of years before I was born. It's been, way, you know, it's been here all through these right. times, and now I'm here at it. And it's like, all these things had to happen, and now I'm walking right up to it. And it's been here for hundreds of years. I, I thought about that. I thought about that same thing. When I perform at the Broadway Comedy Club and I head left instead of right, and I walk into Hell's Kitchen. Right. And just think about the history of the gangs and the fights and all yep. the stuff that happened in Hell's Kitchen way back when. Yeah. I mean, I know the movie Gangs of New York is a fictitious story. I'm sure there's some truth behind I'm it. I'm sure. But there's, yeah, the five points and all that. That was, it was. Did, right. Did you ever see that um, somebody put it on Facebook? Somebody took an old movie from 1910 oh, or something, and it, it was Manhattan, and they enhanced it with sound. So, like, you see this yeah, guy watching. I, I, think, I think you and I watched it at the same time. I think, I think we, we were did. The show. Yes, it was. And they show the Flatiron Building, all right, in Manhattan. Yes. And all these, now, I was at the Flatiron Building. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, all this happened in that exact spot that I was standing like 100 years right. before. And now I'm watching it as it happened. And I'm like, those people are all dead. And now I'm like, right. was at the same spot that those people were in. It's kind of kind of cool in a way. And yep. like a guy is staring at the camera and he's like, what's this guy doing? Not knowing that this guy is going to be seen by us 110 years in the future on a medium he can't right. possibly fathom, and I'm just texting you, hey, see that move? It's it's mind-boggling to me. It's like I can't. It's incredible. You know what else? Now, good. I was just going to say, you know what else is incredible? We just blew through the whole show in an hour. It's at the end of the show. I know. We, <laughs> like this, it goes like this. We got to have you back. Can you come back on the show in a, in a few weeks? Um, I don't see why not. 
Very hard to get John Butera, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to get him twice in the same – maybe not the same – no, we could, we could probably push it this year. If not, we'll have you in January. Absolutely. But I don't really have a lot of people that are, like, dying to come on the show anymore, so we could probably <laughs> fit you in. Um, so for, for a long time, like, I, I had, like, so many people at once, so I, I tried to get as many people on as I could when I could. You know, everybody's busy. Now – it's like I'm have the opposite problem. <laughs> so it's That's a good, funny. It's fun. Um, it's all just well, random. Quick. It's like it's all just like what people are doing and when and if it's convenient. It's, it's all random. It's like when I get asked to do five comedy shows on the same night and I have nothing for the eight weeks prior and nothing for the eight weeks after. But five people want me on that one night. They can't spread it out even a little bit. You know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that happens. Um, that, that that must happen to you a lot, right? Well. The good thing with that for me is that I'll have other people run my shows for me. Right. And then I can go perform elsewhere. You can perform, right. So I I said somebody could have thrown darts at a calendar, right, and not hit the same date that I have on my calendar. And they all just (laughs) happened to be on that one day. That happened like twice. But uh, it was amazing. But I do want to thank Mr. John Butera for coming on. Any last – can you tell us anything uh, where – where people can come see you after the pandemic, you want to promote your uh, Arizona um, well, Com- I just found out. I just found out um, a month ago that um, I have a residency at Mohegan Sun Comics. Whoa, that's huge! I will be I will be headlining the first Thursday night of every month. Uh, the 10 o'clock show uh, at Comics Mohegan Sun. Comics Mohegan Sun. And where can people see your full schedule and all the other shows that you have coming up? I usually, when, when the world is normal, I usually post all my shows and stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my Facebook page is uh, John B. Terry Dash Comedian. For the millions of viewers, please, uh, millions of listeners to your show, please uh, like my page. Millions of listeners. As well, you can see me on (laughs) on Instagram. It's the real John Butera, and uh, I don't really do Twitter. I don't do the Twitter either. I don't do OnlyFans either. Nobody wants to see this in a bikini. (laughs) Well, (laughs) thank you, John Butera, and thank you to my producer Bobby. We're coming to you from the. Newly sanitized uh, and renovated Studio B, which does television and radio. Many legendary shows, including this one, broadcast from this very location on this very network. Mr. Butera, I want to thank you for coming on. You've done a great service to our listeners. I, who, are, who are all going to be, thank you for having me, sir. Who are going to be wealthier on Friday than they were today. So yes. when, they, when they stop buying and selling stocks. Thank you so much, and um, we'll see you next week on the radio when my guest will be somebody. <laughs>